with the growing interest in desktop application containers like flat packs and in a more forced way, snaps. And with the rise of immutable or image-based systems like Silverblue, Kino White, Vanilla OS, Ublue, Blend OS, and all of the others out there, we're starting to see a lot more systems that just automatically update. You don't have to do anything, you can run a manual update, but they just do things for you. And for users who like this method, this is a massive convenience. And unlike on a certain other operating system, you're not forced to reboot in the middle of trying to do some work. But even though it wasn't that many years ago, I remember when I first started using Linux, where doing that was absolutely insane. Like, how dare you automatically update my system without telling me you're gonna be doing an update? Like, that's insane. Only manual updates are the things that you should be doing. But was it really that bad, and should we all just be automatically updating our systems? One thing that is often forgotten is not everybody running Linux is one of these hardcore Linux users, someone who treats Linux as a hobby, someone where Linux is basically their entire personality. There's a lot of people out there who just use Linux. The Steam Deck is a really great example of this. They just use Linux. It doesn't matter that Linux is on the system. It could be Windows. It could be anything else. All that matters is this is a device. But even in the context of people that are running a regular distro on a regular computer, there are people out there running really out of date systems. This is a Linux Mint blog post from 2021. Now, Linux Mint is one of those common entry distros. A lot of people install this for their less technical family members. Or maybe if you're just coming over from Windows, this might be the first distro you use. They found some very interesting numbers. Only 30% of people installed updates within the first week. More importantly, between 5 and 30% of users were running Linux Mint 17 at the time. Now, Linux Mint 17, when this came out, was two years EOL. There was zero reason to still be running that version. And I don't know if these numbers exist, but I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers are somewhat similar on Ubuntu as well. And it shouldn't be that surprising, considering that if you're coming from something like Windows, where Windows Update is really annoying and I genuinely hate the way it works, but it does ensure the system is up to date. If you go from that to having to go and manually update yourself, a lot of people are just not going to take that extra step. So you could very easily say that every system should just automatically update. But on the flip side to that, if you've been using Linux for six months, a year, two years, three years, you're eventually going to run into at least one bad update. And this doesn't matter if you're using Arch Linux or Ubuntu, eventually something is going to happen that is going to cause a problem on your system. Obviously, for a production system, for a work system, that can be a really big deal. But even if it's something that's just a hobby system, you just like to play video games on it, you just like to mess around with distros, you just like to do this or that, any sort of downtime is still going to be really, really annoying. Most people, and I'm including most Linux users here, don't want to spend their entire weekend going through forums, going through subreddits, going through wikis, going through documentation, just trying to find out how to fix this update. Do I roll back the update? Do I apply a different patch? Do I do this? What in the world do I need to do to get my system working? Worse, if you think it's one problem and then you realize like three hours in, it's something entirely different. The problem you're seeing here is just a symptom of a completely different problem. I tend to update my system about once a week, and throughout the course of the week, just things I'm normally doing, I'm checking in on news feeds, checking on forums, things like that, and if something is going wrong with Arch, usually I'll see someone tell me it's wrong way before I was even considering installing the update, and usually I can just wait until that update goes by, and then install the update after that and not really have to worry about it. If it's something that is just, it's broken here and you have to do something going forward, well, I know the mitigation strategy is there and I know that exists before doing the update that's broken and then having to fix the problem afterwards. But if there's nothing I can do besides rolling back an update, doing this on most traditional distros 
is kind of annoying. Yeah, it's fully documented on distros like Arch and other distros are gonna have documentation as well, but I really don't wanna have to go through it, especially on Arch where if you roll back one package, sometimes you have to go and roll back all of the dependencies as well, and they may have dependencies of dependencies, and it's just annoying, and I don't ever wanna have to do it. But when we're talking about an image-based distro, these usually have really strong rollback systems. Like Silverblue, you can just roll back to the previous update, and it's just in the grub bootloader. You don't have to do any extra stuff, it's just there. And I know someone's gonna say, just use ButterFS. And I know, you're probably right. But I don't do it, because I'm stupid. Now alongside the image-based distros, rolling back things like flat packs is also really easy as well. It's basically as easy as jumping to a previous point in a git history. You do that and pretty much you're good to go then. Assuming you're like me and you're too stubborn to use systems like ButterFS, maybe you could argue that automatic updates shouldn't exist. I personally think that both sides of this discussion make some really compelling arguments. You can have automatic updates just start going when you know you're not going to be at your computer. Say you leave your computer on overnight. They can just be done at like 3 in the morning. Or if you turn your computer on and then go for a walk or do some exercise first thing in the morning. It can do the update and you just don't have to worry about it. Ensuring that security and feature updates are always applied when available. But sometimes, you explicitly don't want to do that. Sometimes you want to freeze your environment on a certain version and only work from that. Maybe you know the next version is a little bit problematic and you just want to skip it. Or maybe you want to do some testing for something and you want to know exactly which version you're currently working with. As someone more inclined to a hobbyist system or system management, maybe manual updates make a lot more sense for you. But if you're just using your system as a work machine, you power it on and don't really care about anything else. You don't really think about it being Linux, it's just the thing you use. Assuming all of the updates are going according to plan, maybe automatic updates just make more sense. My general stance on this is leaning more towards the less technical users. I think most systems out there probably should provide an automatic update mechanism, and that mechanism probably should be enabled by default. Because even if something is going wrong with an update, these less technical users probably aren't checking forums, probably aren't checking issue trackers, probably aren't checking anything that would indicate there was a problem with the update anyway. So even if they go and manually install the update, they weren't going to know they needed to fix it anyway. So it's probably better just to keep them up to date, and then if something does eventually go wrong, then it can be dealt with when that comes up. But with a well-managed and well-run distro, which most of the mainstream distros are, that should be few and far between. But I said something very important there, enabled by default. That implies there is some way to disable it, unlike Snaps, which until sometime last year, didn't have that. Like, at all. You had to do some really dumb hacks like holding the update for a really long time or sending the update traffic into the void, but there wasn't a simple way to say, stop updating. Ever since I left Windows and over the years of using Linux, my opinion on this has sort of shifted around and slowly changed as I've read more and more things about how a lot of Linux users interact with their system, like that Linux Mint blog, like comments on Reddit, on my videos, on other videos. I don't think that automatic updates are necessarily a bad thing. In fact, for those people out there who just use Linux without thinking, it's probably for the best. But I will never say no to having extra user control in those cases where user control is important. But the great thing about Linux is if you just never want to think about the problem, there is always going to be a system that suits your needs. And if there isn't a system that suits your needs, you can make that system, like all of the code is out there, you can just go and do it, or you can fork off an older version which did work the way you wanted, and then take it in the direction you now want to take it. So if years down the line, mainstream distros like Ubuntu remove any ability to manually update your system, and everything is done through automatic updates, even then, there is still going to be a place for you.
So let me know your thoughts on automatic updates. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you use them? Do you even realize that your system was doing automatic updates? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly barrel pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And this video automatically ended.